Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to cover the chain of responsibility design pattern. The main purpose of this design pattern is to separate the request, some kind of message, some kind of event from the actual thing that handles it. So let's say we have a fire somewhere within our company. If it's the storage, if it's the production line, if it's a kitchen in the office, depending on who is around at that time, has to take the appropriate action when the fire happens. That is essentially decoupling the event message or request, which is the fire, from the chain of responsibility. So you may have multiple employees, like a regular worker or a cleaner may not be trained to handle a fire. So he'll just run off to a manager or whoever and just say, oh, well, there's a fire. And the manager is going to be like, yeah, just use the fire extinguisher, dude. So in that sense, the event, the message, the request is decoupled from the thing that handles it. And there are multiple things that can handle it. Please remember, if you enjoy the video, subscribe, like, and if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comment section. Let's jump in to this ID or integrated development environment example. If you don't use keybinds, this might sound a little bit foreign. Otherwise, you should feel right at home. If you are a developer and you're not using keybinds, I am judging you. Anyway, uh, it doesn't really make you a bad developer or whatever. It's more about being able to think. So we have the integrated development environment, right? So you click on the icon on your desktop, the application pops up, and then you can select a file, it opens, and you now have code in it. So this is the code editor. This is the editor window. You can have other windows like the terminal, task management, solution window, output, all, all sorts of windows, right? You can have the settings windows, Etc. Let's focus on the code window. Uh, so once we have the code editor open, what we can do is we can then select text. Okay. And this is what I'm going to refer to as the maybe context or focus context. Basically, what context are you currently in? Are you in the context of just the ID? Are you in the context of the code editor? Or are you in the co context of uh, selecting some piece of code or highlighting it or just having your cursor on it? The chain of responsibility is the layers or the context within the IDEs. The event that we're going to be handling is the key input. We all know the Alt F4 key input. Wherever you are in your program, you press Alt F4, it's going to attempt to close your application, right? If you play video games, multiple people will troll you, they'll press Alt F4 for whatever. And when you're young and you press it and you're like, oh man, close my video game. Anyway. A little bit for the structure of how I've set this up. We have the IKEY handler interface, uh, really simple. We're just going to handle a generic key. You can have your generic request, event, message, whatever, accepted in the whatever is going to try to handle this message. This may look a little bit like mediator and the mediator library can be used to implement a chain of responsibility as well. And we'll take a look at an example later of how this works in ASP.NET Core. So we have our first ID implementation where if I press control F, what's going to happen is I'm going to do a full search on the ID. So that means I'm going to search files. I'm going to search text within files. It might try to find some options or if I press Alt F4, it's just going to close the application. Okay. So this is when I create ID. Then if I focus in on the code editor window in the background, in the code, I can say we have our initial root context of ID when we've loaded up the application. Now that we're clicking on the code editor, let's create this new code editor object and let's put the ID in there. So now we're in the editor context and in the editor context, again, it's a key handler. You're going to press keys in there. We're either going to type the, the code that you are typing or if it's a special key bind, we want to hold, uh, we want to handle it. Alt F4 is not part of this, although we could still handle it technically in the code editor, we just choose not to. But anyway, you can press control F inside the code editor. And what's going to happen is you're going to search only the code within the code editor. You do not get uh, access to the outside scope of the application, right? So you do not search the files. You do not search the code in other files. Uh, you only search the file that you're currently in. And otherwise, if it's a keybind like Alt F4, it just goes and gets popped back into this ID, right? So the chain of responsibility here is code editor first. If code editor doesn't handle it, it goes back to the root, to the ID. And then we can have the code selection. 
So we select a piece of code. I don't know if you've ever done it. You may have multiple methods within your file. You want to replace specific things within one method. You highlight the method. You press Ctrl H. That would be in Visual Studio to find and replace. And then you you type in the search term that you want to replace and then what you want to replace it with. And it will only affect the selection. So this is the same thing. So code selection. Once we've dragged our cursor over the code like so and we press Ctrl F, you can see there is an option here, search and selection. Let's hypothetically think that if I have code selected, it's going to bump up the context. I press Ctrl F and it should automatically tick this search and selection option for me. Okay. Instead of just uh, popping up the window as if I was just doing a regular search. You can see also from the original code selection, it is actually filling out what I want to search for. If I don't have anything selected, it should be empty, right? But it's just bringing in the previous one. Hopefully you get the picture. Something happens, a request, message, event, and then you have to handle it in some way. Being able to dynamically compose how you're going to handle requests or messages is the whole, you know, shebang chain of responsibility. Here we can dynamically compose context within our application in ASP.NET Core environment. This may look more like a middleware pipeline. We have a HTTP request that comes in at a certain address, the path, the query, the headers, they're all going to affect what is going to happen. So it, it may look like it's going to different routes. It's, it, it's uh, you know, going to path slash API slash cars or slash API slash animals. That is a little bit of an illusion. That is how the middleware basically takes the path and it then routes it to the correct action. What really happens is it all hits the same socket, the same endpoint. All requests uh, go to the same host, to the same port. Your application then says, all right, what context do we have? And in this case, the context is going to be what path? So if the path is prefixed with static or is a sta it points to a static file that we can actually find in our WW root folder, just serve that, right? All good, chain of responsibility, first thing to handle static files, cool. If we don't have course enabled, we might just say, oh, this is coming from some different domain, uh, get, the, get the hell out of here, right? Uh, we then we can then say things like, all right, is this meant to be a razor page that we registered? Is this a controller? And for the dynamic side of it, let's say you're controlling the application, you've uploaded a file where previously it would not be found in static files where now you could find it, right? So the context has changed. You can now access something that wasn't there before. If we then go further and add authorization and authentication, you can check the state or the context of the headers, look for the tokens in there and see if the user is actually allowed to visit this resource. It can go as far as checking the database. So you can then configure the database to change some values in there. And then again, dynamically affect how the chain of responsibility handles specific requests. That is pretty much all there is to the chain of the responsibility. Again, we are decoupling event, message, or request from how it is handled depending on the context. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Any questions, leave them in the comment section. And have a good day.